second take. To show the takes a look at the issues found in this. President Sol Ramaphosa has announced that infrastructure will be at the centre of South Africa's pandemic recovery plan. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss whether the proposal is credible. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. Why is the president placing such emphasis on infrastructure? Well, South Africa and our president, Sir Ramaphosa, including other governments around the world, are looking at ways to stimulate their economies in light of the COVID-19 pandemic, which has put the world into recession and a risk of depression. And one of the ways to stimulate the economy, and it's not just South Africa, but around the world, is infrastructure. And one of the reasons uh, governments look to infrastructure is that it has large multiplier effects in terms of employment and growth into other sectors of the economy, such as manufacturing and other supply industries, from the construction services, obviously, through to steel and cement. So it has these multiplier effects, it's able to stimulate growth. And in South African context, there's also a pent up demand for economic and social infrastructure. We've got large backlogs. So it's, these are unlikely to be white elephants. Obviously, you need to select these projects very carefully and do project evaluation because there is always a risk of building the wrong thing. And then the cost to the economy is greater than the benefits of the stimulus. So you do have to uh, select well, but we know that we have so many needs, both on the economic infrastructure side, but also on the social infrastructure side, that we can pursue a plan in the sectors outlined, you know, the, the network industries, energy, we know we have a huge deficit there, water, uh, RCT infrastructure, and uh, human settlements. And what we've added into the infrastructure mix, which is probably a little bit unique from around the world, is the agricultural sector. And that's really about uh, uh, sort of stimulating as many jobs through, through this process as possible. Was there any sign in the supplementary budget that government has the resources to support this ambition? Uh, on the contrary, I think the supplementary budget shows that government doesn't really have the resources to stimulate the economy massively. We do have the 100 billion rand infrastructure fund, which has been promised now for a couple of years, and it seems like money will be dedicated to infrastructure. So it's really about emphasis. The budget emphasizes that at the core of our stimulus plan will be infrastructure. It's less about resources. The resources, for in South Africa's case, are going to have to come not only from the government purse, which we know is extremely stressed and de-stressed, uh, and it's going to have to come from crowding in private finance. And the only way to do that, I suppose, is to give the policy certainty and the space for the private sector to get engaged in these projects and to do this in a way where the returns are quite certain. So you do that by either saying, well, we're going to fund this fiscally or we're going to do it as a public-private partnership and there's going to be a, a commercial element to this or it's going to be a blend between the two. So what we have is a project pipeline of about 276 projects. Not all of those are shovel ready but about 50 to 80 of those are said to be investment ready. And that could be, uh, if they are in that sort of position and we can start getting work going, it could be a huge stimulus. Such a pipeline uh, is valued at sort of 2.3 trillion rand. So this government's 100 billion uh, infrastructure fund over uh, a five to 10 year horizon doesn't really cut it. So there aren't the resources, we're going to have to crowd in the private resources. What will help ensure that an infrastructure-led recovery actually takes place? Well, I think this has been the downfall all along with all our infrastructure promises. You know, only really during the run-up to the FIFA 2010 World Cup did we really see implementation as it was, uh, as it was advertised. Since then, it's been a great disappointment in the infrastructure space. And we've seen that in our economy. We see all the infrastructure facing sectors, not least the construction companies in deep distress. Many of them, some of them have already gone into business rescue or maybe liquidated. Others have had to delist. And then we see the other infrastructure sectors are manufacturing, the steel, the cement, 
uh, the construction services companies also uh, in, in distress. So really it's been a big disappointment and the only way to get this going this time is, is through partnership and by leaning more heavily, not only on the finance of the private sector, but also on the private sector's skills and its ability to build and implement as, as uh, promised. Uh, I think that is the message that came out of this week, both from the president uh, in his symposium on infrastructure, as well as from the finance minister. Uh, this needs to be a massive stimulus effort that cannot be done by governments alone. And it's going to have to be a big, large scale public private partnership across many sectors from the health recovery effort, but, but in the infrastructure space in particular, without this partnership and without government providing the policy certainty and the space, the regulatory space for projects to proceed, it's going to be another disappointment. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.